Martyr Monday, Saint Agatha. Here's a story. I was looking for the quote where Luther quotes St. Jerome. It says, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. And to my surprise, I found all these this talk about uh, the martyrs in Luther. Uh, and in fact, I found that he mentions more, probably more often than not, one particular martyr, and that's St. Agatha. Now, who was Agatha? She was born in Sicily, probably around the year 230 to 235. And as she got, when she was a child, she was a Christian, she committed herself to, um, to, to her education, to serving the church. She was going to remain a virgin for the rest of her life. But this guy, Galerius, wanted her to be his wife. And when she refused, uh, he handed her over to the persecution. It was a persecution in Sicily from the year 250 to 252, 253 under Decius. And uh, that's what my note says, Decius. And so, uh, so they threw her in prison. Can you imagine? They threw her in prison to humiliate her into a brothel. At the end of the month-long prison stay, they abused her uh, and, and mutilated her. In fact, you'll have to excuse me, but they, one of the things they did to Agatha, at least according to the tradition, is they cut off her breasts. That's why she's often depicted in art as holding a tray uh, with, her, with her body parts there on, on it. And then they were going to burn her at the stake, but, uh, but there was an earthquake, and so she died in prison. And, and Luther quotes uh, or talks about her all the time, especially how the Lord gave this special gift of of fearless joy to the martyrs and especially to young girls uh, who were going to be martyred so that uh, that the whole church would be strengthened. Now, 37 times Luther mentions uh, Luther mentions Agatha and I want to read you just a couple of them. You ready, ready for this? This is Luther talking about 1 Timothy uh, 6.12 where Paul says to Timothy, fight the good fight. He says, hold fast, don't despair. Don't become faint-hearted. That comfort is necessary even for us. Take hold. The flesh wants annoyance to weary it. You have much protection and a good start. The end will come too. You have a calling and an excellent confession. This is the right article of faith, a great thing when one does battle with Satan and his angels. In it, the body does not suffer. Faith itself, rather, and hope suffer. In all other temptations, faith stands like a wall, and faith laughs the bones of the things which suffer. But when the bones tremble, faith marches on with joy as Agatha laughs and rejoices. Because her faith was in control, she did not suffer. But when our courage becomes weak, there is an immediate battle with the demons. This encouragement to strengthen faith and hope is necessary for those who are in the Word. It's fantastic. Now, Luther especially loves um, to talk about St. Agatha when he's, quote, when he's talking about John, chapter 14 and 15. So here's a little bit more. Luther writes, and this is on John 14, 17, which says, The Spirit of the truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. Luther says, Thus we read about the holy martyrs, who defied tyrants, or about the suffering and tortures of the young virgins Agnes and Agatha, who were so cheerful and happy on their way to prison and death that they imagined with pride that they were going to their wedding. Indeed, dear daughter, if you can face imprisonment and beheading as though you were going to a dance, then your heart, mind, and courage must surely be different from the world's. You can disdain life and limb, nobility, and friendship, and all the possessions on which the world places its reliance, such courage must be the work of none other than the Holy Spirit. And it must meet with hearty approval from the Heavenly Father to see a heart which resolves so firmly and stoutly and affirms unyieldingly, I will not leave Christ, but for his sake I will cheerfully suffer what I can. If anyone does not like it, he can lump it. Ha! <laughs> Or, here's uh, Luther on John 15, 1. We read when St. Agatha, a girl 14 or 15 years old, was being led to imprisonment and torture. She went cheerfully and said that she felt as though she were being escorted to a dance. Can you imagine? Here, here I'm now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take you to be martyred. And we say, oh, fine, now I'm going, to I'm going to the wedding feast. 
These are surely words of comfort and defiance from a young girl who regards the torment and death to which she is being led as no different from a wedding and an occasion for the greatest joy. This is due to faith, which has averted the eyes from the physical appearance and sensations and has directed them upward to the life beyond. It has concluded, what can they accomplish, even if they do their worst and afflict me with every misfortune? The, they only usher me quickly from this misery to Christ in heaven. It is the soul... It is the sole purpose of all the sufferings of Christians to promote our Christian life and to bear fruit for a fuller knowledge and a stronger confession of the word, a more certain hope, and a wider expansion of the kingdom of Christ. Here's Luther, John 16, 33. Accordingly, having peace in him... What is that verse? That verse is, uh, in this world you will have trouble, but behold... Yes, it... Uh, I've said this to you, that in me you have peace, in the world you have tribulation, tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Luther writes, accordingly, having peace in Christ means nothing else than this. He who has Christ's word in his heart becomes so bold and unafraid that he can scorn and defy the devil's wrath and raging. This was demonstrated by the holy martyrs, yes, even by young maidens like Saints Agatha and Agnes, who faced their torment joyfully, though they were going to a dance, and even mocked their angry tyrants. Do you not suppose that it vexed the tyrants to see a young girl so utterly despise their devilish anger, the sword, and death that she called it nothing else than going to a dance? My dear friend, where does she get such defiance? The precious word of Christ gives it to her. When this world... Sorry. When this word enters the heart, it generates courage like that of these saintly maidens. It must annoy the devil beyond measure and inflict great agony on him to see his fierce anger, the anger of a dragon and a lion, the anger which devours the whole world so utterly ridiculed and despised. Such courage can be brought about with one little word from him who says, I've told you this, therefore you have heard from me, Jesus, that you shall be of good cheer and unafraid that I have overcome the world, and that you shall be a mighty Lord and shall trample them under underfoot, even though they put you to death. <laughs> this is amazing. In what way were the dear martyrs, and especially such young girls, different from us and other people? What was the difference? Where did they get the courage and the joy others do not have? Manifestly from no other source than this word in their hearts. Therefore, Christ says, Be in mind, bear in mind that I have told you this. Don't be overawed, but confidently overawe those who want to plague and torture you, for their plaguing, torturing, frightening shall become your joy and delight, your garden of roses. Luther talks about this as, a, as, the, as the form of spiritual uh, drunkenness. Oh, i got to find this for you guys. And he's talking about it in the Psalms. Aha! It's not the Psalms, it's the Genesis Psalms. Found it. Sorry about that. It's in the Genesis commentary. This is Luther on Genesis 49, verse 11 and 12. He says, For I, as I have stated, if we could believe what an important thing the forgiveness of sins is, even of those sins that still exist and are left in the flesh, namely, that God does not want to impute these sins and condemn us on their account. Yes, he wants to deal with us as if no sin adhered to us, to crown us with eternal life and to be our Father. And he wants us to be his children and to be saved forever. As it stated, he who believes and is baptized will be saved, Mark 16, 16. Then we would finally understand this. For those who believe are saintly asses, and falls tied to the vine and drunk with the Holy Spirit. Thus the saintly martyrs and the saintly maidens, Agatha, Lucia, and many others, were bound to the vine. They regarded death as a game and sin as hell, and sin and hell as nothing. They were completely certain of the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and the best intention of the fathers. Even in the midst of death, they were joyful and fearless. 
In this matter, the saintly father spoke loudly and joyfully about the kingdom of Christ and the fullness of the Holy Spirit, and from this one can gather what their discourses and sermons were. Certainly Jacob did not teach these things only in his last hour or on this day. No, he diligently transmitted what he had received from Abraham and Isaac and impressed on his children and grandchildren the fact that the kingdom of Christ would be exceedingly rich and there would be a washing and a purging away of sins among those who were drunk with the Holy Spirit. Thus Ag Agatha said to the executioner, If you don't crush my body, I shall not be able to enter into life. This is the way I should be treated. In this way, I shall enter paradise. Vicentius also regarded martyrdom as a game and as a joke. In these people, the spirit mortified the accursed and obstinate flesh, and he does the same thing to us when he throws us to the Turk to be torn to pieces and slaughtered, and as he does so by other calamities. There he washes our garments in blood in the midst of prison, of, in the midst of prisons, wait a minute, in the midst of prisons and torments, and then we should think that Christ is speaking these words to us. I want to wash you, not with the water, but with the choicest wine, provided you are silent and patient. Just keep quiet. To understand this, the suffering of martyrdom, as being the will of God even in death, is this not the meaning of being drunk? And yet we have this... Uh, drunkenness of the spirit which is the which is the confidence to know that even death cannot separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus so Agatha gives us the confidence to take heart in the midst of suffering and persecution and all this stuff we take heart knowing that when we go to death we're going to a dance if our bodies aren't crushed we can't enter into life and yet enter into life we will God be praised for that. Happy Martyr Monday.